as with a line, a plane can be defined by an infinite set of vectors, the endpoints of which form the plane. So let's take a plane and say the origin of our coordinate system is here. Then how can we describe this plane mathematically using vectors? Well, for that, we'll need a vector from the origin to a point in the plane. So let's say we know such a vector. Say it's this vector A here, going to point A in the plane. We also need a normal vector to the plane. Recall that this means a vector that is perpendicular to the plane. Again, let's say we know such a vector, say this one here, N. So N is coming out of the plane at a 90 degree angle. Then the equation P dot N equals A dot N defines the plane where P varies over all vectors which satisfy this condition. That is, the set of all vectors P that satisfy equation 1 defines a plane in the sense that if all the vectors were starting at the origin, their endpoints would form a plane. How do we show that this is the case? Well, first we need to show that any vector going from the origin to the plane does indeed satisfy equation 1. So, say the point P is some point in the plane, and lowercase p is the vector from O to P. Then the vector from A to P clearly lies in the plane. That's this vector here. This means that AP dot N is zero, since they must be perpendicular, and perpendicular vectors always have scalar product zero. But what is AP? Well, we can get from point A to point P by first moving along vector A, in the opposite direction to vector A, and then along vector P, in the same direction as vector P. So AP is in fact equal to minus A plus P. So minus A plus P dot N equals zero. Distributing the dot product over the brackets gives us minus A dot N plus P dot N equals zero. Rearranging gives P dot N equals A dot N, as required. So indeed, all such vectors do satisfy equation 1. But what about a vector that goes from the origin to a point not in the plane? We need to make sure that such a vector does not satisfy the equation. So say we have this point Q, just above the plane. And we consider the vector from O to Q. We'll call lowercase q. Well, without going into too much detail, hopefully you can see that AQ, this vector here, does not lie in the plane. And hence AQ is not perpendicular to N. So AQ dot N does not equal zero. Hence the argument above won't hold and so the vector Q does not satisfy the equation. Let's look at this in component form. So say P equals x, y, z, a equals a1, a2, a3, and n equals n1, n2, n3. Then our equation from earlier, p dot n equals a dot n, becomes n1x plus n2y plus n3z equals n1a1 plus n2a2 plus n3a3. But remember that the vectors n and a are specific fixed vectors. So their components are some constants. Hence, the right-hand side is a constant. Let's call it C. Then the equation becomes N1X plus N2Y plus N3Z equals C. This hopefully is something you recognize, as it's very similar to the standard equation for a plane in Cartesian coordinates. Let's finish with an example. So let's work through the following question. What is the equation of the plane containing the points A equal to minus 4, 3, 0, B equal to 3, 4, 2, and C equal to minus 2, minus 2, 1? Let's start by drawing these points onto this set of axes. Here's A, here's B, and here's C. Okay, so now that we understand where A, B, and C are relative to the axes, Let's clear some of the clutter from this diagram. Now, to answer this question, what information do we need? Well, we'll need a vector normal to the plane we're wanting to describe. 
to find such a vector, we can take the cross product of two vectors in the plane, since this would give us a vector perpendicular to both of those vectors, and hence perpendicular to the plane. Clearly, the vector from A to B, and the vector from A to C, are both entirely within the plane containing the three points, so let's calculate these vectors. All we have to do to calculate the vector from one point to another is subtract the coordinates of the first point from the respective coordinates of the second point, and the results will be the components of the desired vector. This may sound a little confusing, so let's see how it works. So, the vector from A to B is the vector from minus 4, 3, 0 to 3, 4, 2. This has as its first component 3 minus minus 4. That's the first coordinate of B, subtract the first coordinate of A. Then similarly for the other two components we get 4 minus 3 and 2 minus 0. This equals 7, 1, 2. We'll do the same thing for vector AC. We get minus 2 minus minus 4, minus 2 minus 3 and 1 minus 0, which equals 2, 5, 2, minus 5, 1. So we have the vectors in our planes. Let's take the cross product now to get a normal vector. We won't go through the cross product in detail, as this was covered in a previous video. We'll simply state that AB cross AC equals 11 minus 3 minus 7, and leave it to you to confirm this. So this equals n, our normal vector. To find the equation though, we also need p, our varying vector, and some specific vector which goes from the origin to the plane. The position vector of any point in the plane will do. So let's use the position vector of a, which we'll call lowercase a, which is equal to minus 4, 3, 0. So we have all the info we need Let's put it together. The equation is of course just p dot n equals a dot n from earlier. Plugging in what we have, we get 11x minus 3y minus 7z equals minus 4 times 11, which is minus 44, plus minus 3 times 3, which is minus 9, plus minus 7 times 0, which is just 0, so we'll ignore it. Finally, this gives us the equation 11x minus 3y minus 7z equals minus 53.